Brandon, let's get right to it, man. This one's not going to be fun for a lot of people. No, I'm just kidding. The title's <laughs> much harsher than what it really is. Stop being an optimist. We're just going to talk about it. Ooh. Welcome to another episode of Monday Mindset. My name is Aaron, and as always, this is my good buddy Brandon. Man, ready to dive in. Episode 18. Yeah. Pumped up, man. Yeah. You excited? Don't be too excited. Stop being an optimist. Stop being an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> so, Monday Mindset is a conversation that offers reflection, encouragement, and next steps to kickstart your week. As the title says, stop being an optimist. It's not that harsh. We're just making a bold statement here. And we're going to challenge you a little bit because I've been challenged. Brandon's been challenged by this thought and really what optimism we think can do to our lives in a negative way. Mm. We're going to talk about it, though. Yeah. Brandon, are you an optimist? I, I'm usually a pretty big optimist. I try to look at things on the pot. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It's yeah. going to be all right. Yeah, so I would say uh, most of the time, unless it comes to – uh, Kentucky basketball. Uh, however, however, <laughs> come on now, playing well. I will say this. this I will say that's this. That's the statement there. Well, however, playing well. We've hey. only lost 12 hey. games. Hey, playing well right now. <laughs> that's an optimist. See? And that's what I'm saying. I, I really am. Like, it's like, it's a problem. However, um, I will say a lot of people, like, like all of worst team ever and all this stuff. They've been awful. I'll, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. talk about facts. They've been bad. However, I mean, you can ask my wife, Abby. I told her this like a month and a half <laughs> ago. I said, listen, babe. I was sitting on the couch. Kentucky had just lost. <laughs> and I usually get madder than a hornet. And I said, babe, listen, I really think this team could connect and start playing well. <laughs> And she looked at me because she's a ball player. And she looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I was like, no, like, seriously. I was like, they can make a little run. Right now, they're not even going to get into the tournament. <laughs> However, there's the SEC tournament. Yeah, there's that. And I'm just saying, they just waxed a couple teams. <laughs> uh, they play well. Now, I don't know. Um because y'all just found out we record this a little early because now they'll probably go on a little losing streak <laughs> and I'm going to look dumb on here. Uh, but I'm going to name it, claim it that they've been winning <laughs> and it's looking good. And there it is. Go. <laughs> the words of an optimist. Just start talking about Kentucky basketball. Yeah. You'll either find the pessimist and then the next <laughs> week they're the optimist. That's right. That's the way that we roll, isn't yeah. it? Oh, man, that's hilarious. I'm so glad you brought that up. That's so good, man. That's so good. Uh, what about you? Oh, yeah. I like I like seeing um, the good in things. I like seeing a brighter future, all of those things. Uh, pretty big optimist. I can turn pretty quick to pessimists. Yeah, I can yeah. turn pretty quick. I will say that. Uh, COVID, I was definitely the biggest optimist of all. 100%. You know, March that hits. Ah, We'll be out by Easter. We'll be good. Think about that. We said we'd be out by Easter. Uh, then I said, oh, yeah, first of the year, I think we'll all be good. I mean, and then finally I just stopped. I said, nah, this not, I'm not even going to pick a number. I did pick another number. I said by the summer we'd be out. Why did you pick I know. I picked summer, Why? man. Why did you I pick picked summer? It. I just thought, hey, by summer it'll all be back to normal. Um, let's see. What else am I optimist about? I just like, I would even say like optimism for me is um, not, deception isn't the right word. Yeah, I deceive myself or I can really, and there's, here's the best part, man. I'm so, I can convince my, convince myself. That's what I need. That's what I am. By having conversations with other people, like the UK basketball, I can just imagine if my father-in-law was sitting here, man, you two would be 100% convinced that they are definitely probably even going to win the NCAA title yeah. by the end of it. Yeah, That's the way that two optimists coming together, yeah. like they are able to convince ourselves even more yeah. about the truths that we believe. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, my dad would probably have you believe that um, Kentucky – 
<laughs> basketball doesn't exist right now and that they've lost every game this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That they've been banned from the NIT tournament and everything. <laughs> it's like they're awful. They're it completely terrible. goes the other way. <laughs> exactly. No hope at all. It's funny. I got off the phone with them uh, last week and uh, I said, uh, hey, we up to? He said, I was sitting here watching a movie. I said, did you not watch the Cats play? He said, I ain't watching that. I said, well, they just beat Tennessee really good. That's the first game they've won in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a chance. All right, so let's look at the, the difference. We could say that there's, there's optimists and there's pessimists, okay? How would you, how would you maybe define um, an optimist? I, I would say that oftentimes we look at, at an optimist as someone who um, – looks on the bright side of things, someone who sees the cup half full, not half yeah. empty, uh, someone who always sees uh, positive even in uh, the negative. Yeah. Uh, on a rainy day, well, at least the, uh, <laughs> the, the grounds plants get are growing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least the, the corns are growing. I don't know. I'm not oh, we definitely needed really. that rain. Yeah, you know, that's mean, how they but <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> but that's – um. Yeah, that's how I see an optimist, a pessimist. Uh, I will say this. I will go back on myself a little bit. I'm an optimist about a lot of things, but a pessimist about myself. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. super negative on myself, super there critical on myself. Yeah. Um, but a lot of, We can all relate. Yeah, so uh, a pessimist is one who finds everything wrong, even like in the good days. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful, sunny. Well, it's just too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never. Well, satisfied. pools outside. The water's just too cold right now. <laughs> it's too warm. Uh, yeah, too warm. You can't cool down in that. Yeah. So I mean, Bess is just yeah. always looking at uh, something negative, something to complain about. Yeah. And, yeah. Who do you like to be around more? Uh, optimist. And I don't think we all would yeah. agree with that. Nobody likes to be around a pessimist. Sometimes though, the negative. So the same way you talk highly about Kentucky basketball. Man, you start talking about a game that they lost or something oh, with yeah. somebody else. Oh, oh pessimists thrive oh, together, get... putting it down. You know what I mean? But then it flips. Talk about some referees, some bad calls. They made. <laughs> what? Go. Oh, Every... yeah. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. But we can see all throughout our life, we have moments where we are extremely optimistic. And then there's times in our life where we're extremely pessimistic. Yeah. And what we hope is that when we kind of put this, we should have titled Stop Being a Pessimist, too. You know what I mean? But everybody's like, oh, no, be an optimist. Uh, be optimistic. See the cup half full. See the bright side of things. We want to challenge you a little bit today. We'll challenge my own mindset, your mindset, about how we view our current situations, how we view our future hopes. And uh, we're going to do that. We're going to set it up. And I'm going to read a little bit here, all right? Yeah. So don't right. lose me, Brandon. Right. Don't lose me. I want to introduce to you all a new perspective called the Stockdale Paradox. Mm. The Stockdale Paradox. So I recently read this book. Uh, it's called Good to Great by Jim Collins. Mm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how, how, how good organizations become great when they talk about this uh, Stockdale Paradox. And I feel like, man, for every single person in our lives, we can use this, um, use this to set things up for, for decisions, our current circumstances, what have let's talk a little bit about so the name refers to admiral jim stockdale all right so he was the highest ranking united states military officer in the uh i'm not even gonna try this hanai hilton we'll try that prisoner of war camp during the height of the vietnam war so he served there but he ended up becoming a prisoner of war he was tortured over 20 times during his eight-year imprisonment eight years man from 1965 to 1973 can you imagine that? No. Eight years of being in prison, in a prison camp, being tortured? Think about that. No. And he's a high officer, man. It's hard to tell him what he went through. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Who? Cannot imagine. Who? And we're talking about a year in COVID. Can you imagine, man? Eight it's years. It's crazy. Eight years of COVID? Mm. Do you imagine eight years of COVID? No. Dude, I would be 350 pounds. <laughs> 100%. 100%. <laughs> oh, I know. My new attire would probably just be a robe and underwear. Yeah. That would be it. Maybe slippers. Some slippers. I was going to say slippers. Absolutely. Keep your feet warm. Anyways, uh, so he was tortured from 1965 to 1973. He lived out the war without any prison rights, no set release date, and no certainty as to whether he would even survive to see his family again. And so the question becomes, how did he survive? And Jim Collins asked him this question, how did you survive? And this was his answer. He said, I never lost faith in the end of the story. He said, I never doubted not only that I would get out, 
but also that I would prevail in the end and turn the experience into the defining moment of my life, which in retrospect, I would not trade. Come on now. Think about how good that is. Jeez. Think about how good that yeah. is. You think about your current situations that you're in right now. What has been troubling you? What has been causing stress? What's been causing anxiety in our lives? And to flip it and say, you know what? This is hard. This sucks. I don't like this. I don't like what I'm going through right now. But you know what? I will prevail. And the flip side is, this is what I loved about this the most. He said that he turned this, he said, I would turn this experience into the most defining moment of my life that he would not trade. Yeah. Think about that, man. Yeah. Nobody thinks like that. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. The pessimist sees their situation and never thinks they're going to get through it, only sees the negative. Yeah. The optimist only sees the future and doesn't see, doesn't even want what they're going through. They don't want it. They just are so focused on what is to come. Jim Collins asked him a question. He said, who didn't survive? Mm. And this is what got me. Mm. Stockdale said, the optimist. Like, you're like, what? The optimist? He's like, you sound optimistic. You sounded optimistic. Yeah. He said, no, I'm not optimistic. You're not. But he said, the optimist said, they were the ones who said, we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas would come. And Christmas would go. Mm. Then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter. And Easter would come and Easter would go. And then Thanksgiving and then it would be Christmas again. And they died of a broken heart. Wow. Jim wow. Collins said that they took a long pause and did more walking. And he said, Stockdale turned to Jim Collins and said, this is a very important lesson. So he was trying to make sure he understands. And this is what really was profound. All of this kind of getting into, into what this means to me. Uh, but he said, you must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose. We can never afford to even lose that optimistic heart. I would say that's the faith, that we will prevail. We can never afford to lose that. With the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. Think about that, man. How good is that? How good is that? That's so good. Dude, let's talk about the optimist. So yeah. why, why is the optimist? What's the struggle with the optimist? I, I think that um, with, with talking about optimists and pessimists, I think that so often with the, with the optimist, um, you always do look for a certain time, a certain uh, date, a certain circumstance to happen to make something seem good. Yeah. Uh, and you try to stuff the negativity or you try to brush off the negativity. And you may not notice what it's doing to you, but it's still doing something to you. So whenever you don't uh, take time to notice the bad things happening around you, um, oftentimes the bad things will get stuffed inside of you. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're just constantly optimistic you're, and you're looking forward, you're looking to the future, and the future never comes the way that you expect. Or even back to the normalcy of what you had. Exactly. Right? then that, the disappointment and the letdown crashes harder yeah. than anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, it's one of those things where, man, it, it will lead to a broken heart because you're so broken. You're so crushed by something that you set an unreal expectation for that you were like, and, and it's almost one of those things where it's like, what, for it to be good, it has to be this way. Right, right. We'll be out by Christmas. Well, okay, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's Easter. And if it's by then, then it's still good. By then, it's still good. Yeah. And I would like to, when did that point stop, though? It was like, well, it's not good now. Right. It's gone. Right. It's over. Just lose all hope. Exactly. And it's it, it you just lose it all. Yeah. And that's what happens so often yeah. with being an optimist. Man, I can even make the connection. So me and you both, we'll kind of get into the church world here. Um, and you all, everybody that's listening can definitely relate in one way or another. But I think COVID really challenged the church. Mm -hmm. We were so optimistic. Remember the first, we got the call, hey, Sundays, we are having church. We don't know what's coming. Yeah. But yeah, by Easter, we'll be back in the building. Let's start planning for Easter. And I can remember, man, having that conversation. Uh, yeah, we are getting back in the building. Yeah. And then I can remember from that conversation, okay, May, 
we'll shoot for the first of May or end of May, end of May, first of June, we'll be back in the building. Yeah. That was all we thought about. Yeah. That was like our hope. That was our focus. We understood like what we were going through, but we never really confronted it. Yeah. Like we never really owned it. We never really spun it, you know, and, and how we just continue to focus. Like there was definitely things that we did as pastors and, you know, uh, you know, definitely working through the different ministries or the church did in general to work through this um, just to minister to our people. But it still was like, when, when we coming back? Yeah. I just want to be back in the building. Yeah. And so every single time hope would come and we would be so, and then I can remember the crushing call whenever I thought, Hey, we'll be back in the building in August. And then we weren't. August was probably the most difficult times for me in ministry that I've ever had. Because it was like for six months, I've been saying we're going to be back in the building. Yeah. And there it went again. And so I can definitely relate for it in whatever yeah. situation that this may be. You know, um, you know, you think about like your your marriage. You're thinking, like, oh yeah, my marriage is just going to get better. One day we'll get we'll stop fighting. Yeah. And then what happens? You're still fighting two weeks later, yeah. and you're just continue to stuck in this hopefulness that you're going to just magically get out of it. Yeah. And and moments may come. Hey, yeah. sure, that may work. And I think that maybe what drives some optimism is that sometimes it does work out. Yeah, <laughs> but, for sure. But a lot of times, man, I think we're left hopeless. Yeah, and I think that what happens so often is whenever you are so optimistic, um, and I, I, I mean, I have zero proof of this. Like, I, I don't know. However, I know for me personally, it's happened um, in the past to where now I would say I'm, I'm doing better with it, which is why I've become more optimistic. But there for a while, I was a complete pessimist. But I think it's because I was yeah. so optimistic for yes. so long yes. that I got a great point. crushed. And on the flip, I became an immediate yes. pessimist. Man, that's and, so good. That's and so that true. happens so often mm. in our life that uh, that all hope is gone. We are absolutely crushed. And, man, it, the it's just defeated. Yeah. You're deflated. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everything's bad. Yeah. Everything. Absolutely. And that's why you can't find any joy in the midst of suffering. <laughs> yeah. That's why you can't find the peace. That's why you mm. can't find the comfort. That's why you, because it, you're looking at things the wrong way. Yeah. And so often that happens though. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the Stockdale, Stockdale paradox is summed up in this way. It challenges people to maintain unwavering faith that you can and will prevail in the end. So what he's saying there is that you have all the capacity, all the might, all the will to see this thing through. Mm -hmm. You can survive. And that's like when you compare your circumstances to his, eight years eight years in a prison camp, and he's like, no, I'm going to make it. There's nothing that they can do to bring me down. It's like, dude, he's just pushing. And he sees it like, I have faith that I will prevail. I can do this. I have the will. I have the capacity to do this. But, and I think this is the part that we have to be better at. And I think that we all can, to a point, have the faith. I don't think we have faith that could last eight years in a persecution like that. I don't think that we can yeah. do that. Yeah. I think we're soft yeah. when it comes to that. Um, I think there's tons of room to grow there. But this is the part we all have to get better at, is that at the same time, have the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, mm. whatever they might be. That is not being a pessimist. That is just being just brutally honest that, hey, this is going to be extremely difficult. Yeah. To get through the situation, it's going to be hard. If you're going through a struggle time with your marriage, you know what? It's going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to be difficult to finally yeah. get on the same page again. If you're struggling with your child, you know what? It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. Will you make it better in six months? I don't know. But you know what? You can work your butt off. You can try everything in your power, but you can also have unwavering faith, yeah. especially if you believe in God, that God will continue to be with you. He'll work with you and that God will see this thing through. Yeah. But can you maintain the faith even in your circumstances that you have? But I don't think we like to confront the brutal facts enough in our life. And that creates that false optimism. Yeah, I think that happens so often that, uh, and that's what I was talking about. That so often we live in a fairy tale land uh, with, like, as an optimist that man, everything's gonna be okay. There's a, there's a, 
a happy ending. There's yeah. a, a perfect circumstances. There's this is going to happen and it's going to take place. However, I don't think that uh, we realize how um, bad things are sometimes. Right. And we don't just take the time to go. You know what, man? Uh, things aren't going well. Right. I mean, it, whenever you even ask someone, "How are you?" Uh, I would say majority of us would say, oh, doing good. Yeah. And that's the optimist coming out that, oh, right. doing good. But in reality, right. you just don't want to face the fact that things are bad. Yeah. And not only do you not want to open up to that person, but you don't want to even face it either. Yeah. And that's so, so true. I think that a lot of times we do need to like have the unwavering faith, but also face the facts. Yeah. And I think that what happens is our faith is put so often in the wrong places. Mm -hmm. And it's that, and I think that that's why we wouldn't last. I think that that's why oh, we yeah. are soft is yeah. because what's your faith in? Right. Uh, because at the end of the day, we can be an optimist as a Christian. Why? We do know the end of the story. Right. We do. So true. At the end of the day, we do know the end. We know that even in the midst of bad circumstances and bad situations that God is good. The Bible says that God will work all things for the good of those who love him. We yeah. can be optimistic because of those things, because of those truths, because of our faith. However, I think that our faith and the reason that we're soft and that our faith can be washed away so easily is because the faith is in the wrong places. Yeah. That whenever Absolutely. you are forced to face the facts, that the faith then becomes in the background mm -hmm. and is washed away. Yeah. However, if you face the facts and you go, you know what, this is hard. That's one thing that I noticed within the story. He went through it, but he had a realization of what he was going through. Mm -hmm. And he said, but you know what? I'm not going to trade this for the, for the world. I know. And you know what? The situation you may be going through right now, man, realize what's going on. Don't just stuff it down. Yeah. Don't just stuff it. Because I'm telling you, it will come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. will. Yeah. And you have to, you have to go man, this is hard, man, this is bad, but God, right? but God's Absolutely. still good Absolutely. and God will still work it together. Absolutely, man. And that's where you have that unwavering right. faith. Absolutely. Um, and I think that that part there, you know, we see, we take the Sogdale paradox and we add that little line that, that he put there, exactly what you said, that this will become one of the most defining, defining events in my life. You know what I really connect with? That? That's people's testimonies. Yeah. You talk to people that came to know the Lord gave their life to Jesus, he, Jesus, and God found them in one of their darkest times, in their darkest moments, and that's where they, God moved into their life and completely transformed. You know what they are doing? They aren't wishing that God would have changed them before because through their experiences, through their testimony, through what they have gone through in their life, was it hard? Was it difficult? Yes, but man, through it all, Jesus showed up and completely changed them and transformed them. Yeah. We have so many testimonies in our life, the hard times, the struggles that we 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 go through in our life, create the testimonies that God is still good, that God is still able to work, and God is still able to move. And that's where we will continue to put our faith in whenever the next trials come. Because sure. we're going to see him, man. James 1, 2 through 4, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness fastness, have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. So good, man. It's so, so good. good. So we want to leave you today. We know that right now that you have situations that you're going through. We have situations yeah. in our own life right now that are just extremely difficult. They're challenging. But I want to read the Stockdale Paradox to you one more time. It challenges me and Brandon, challenges you to maintain unwavering faith that you can and will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties and at the same time, have the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. So we encourage you today, don't be an optimist. Have faith, confront your current reality, and believe that God will move, that God is working in you to bring it into fruition, bring it to life, yeah. bring, it, bring the hope and the joy that you've been waiting for. But understand that right now, God's doing something great in your life. God's doing something great in our lives. And even though it's hard and it's difficult, man, God's still good. Yeah. God's still moving. Yeah. But guys, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Monday Mindset.